Hi guys and welcome to this video which is going to be the uh, a tutorial on the replacement of the ribbon keypad that these buttons connect to in the back of the Canon EOS M camera, um, EOS M and M2 cameras and um, as you may remember if you uh, if you saw my last video on replacing the LCD screen I, uh, in the process, I managed to damage the ribbon cable, which means that some of these buttons became inoperable, as I will just demonstrate. So we'll just put that on to... Now, as you press up, you should get your shooting options, which allow you to do burst shot, single shot, and set the timer, and that doesn't work. As you press down, you should get the delete option. That one does work. There's a magic lantern on there, as you can see. As you press right, that should move, I'll, I'll open the menu so you can see that easy. As you press right, obviously it should scroll right and left will scroll left as it does. But the right button and the up button don't work. The down button and the left button do work. And in addition to that, the Q and set button don't work either. The info button doesn't work. The menu button does, the play button does, and the record button still do. So we've actually lost the use of four different buttons on the back of this. So, and this is due to this ribbon cable, this portion here, tearing. Here's the new replacement ribbon cable. In, uh, it's very sort of relatively simple with these, these being the actuation buttons down here. And what we're gonna do is turn this off remove all the accessories and bits and pieces and then take apart the camera case by removing the side panels on both sides and then the screws at the bottom and the top and separating the two halves of the camera so that we can get to the rear portion and work on that. For detail, I'm just going to skip to that being stripped um, rather than go through the whole thing again. So if you want to see what's required to actually disassemble the camera body, uh, pop to my video on replacing the LCD screen and on there you will see a detailed step-by-step -step procedure in removing these components to strip this apart to get to the part that you need. Remembering of course to keep your lens or your camera body cap attached um, after you remove the front fascia to prevent dust and debris getting into the sensor. Here we are as you can see with the front and back plate removed, the battery and the memory card removed and the uh, bits and pieces. We don't need to strip any more of this down as it stands at the moment. This of course is the replacement LCD that we're putting in the last video but this is the part that we need just now and it's this section here or rather the ribbon as you can see which snakes around and goes in it's, it's sandwiched in between this metal plate and some plastic pieces um, and the buttons. And this is the bit that we're going to go ahead and replace just now. So I'm just going to zoom in so that you can see that in closer detail. So as you can see now, the bit that we need to remove next is this plate that the ribbon is attached to. This is held in place by two screws. Again, JAS crosshead screwdriver. You've got one on the inside at the lower left, like so. And we have a second one, which you can see coming through from the rear. This is underneath the rubber thumb pad, thumb grip on the back plate of the camera. This is this section here. So what you'll need is some kind of tool to pry open the lip at this side a little. You only need to peel this up so far, just far enough to get your screwdriver in and undo, undo that screw there. And then you can pop that pad back down this entire plate now, if you push through on this button on the back of the dial, will lift out. And you can see it has, it connects by two little clips here, which clip onto this molded in piece here. This video is not a repair for the faint of heart. This is not something you would take on lightly because this next step involves breaking away some of these pins which are molded in 
which the bulk of them, when you reassemble, are actually sandwiched in between the plastic, the, uh, the pad and the metal plate and held in place by screws, which is a good thing because that means they're not going to drop out. The dial, however, the dial section itself will be held in, but the central section with these, with the Q button and this ring around the middle uh, will not be. So they need to be glued back in place. So you need to be aware of this. And if you are in any doubt whatsoever as to your ability to tackle this and you are just not comfortable with it at all, then what you can do is buy a complete replacement back with this piece fitted for um, around 40 45 pounds on eBay and obviously that's the easy fix you just buy a complete replacement back slot it on and away you go uh, this particular repair uh, ribbon with the buttons on however is considerably cheaper um, a much much cheaper option so if you're confident enough then go ahead but do uh, do be aware that it's not this is not an easy fix. So we'll just pop that out of the bag so, and we'll have a closer look at this. So let's focus on this for you. And it's printed board, like printed circuit board kind of thing with your rotary adjustments there and each of these dimples are a pressure pad which your buttons operate on. And then of course your ribbon cable which will require two folds at these crease points here and here that you can see and we'll deal with that when we get to that in a moment now the first thing we need to do is detach the plastic pins which are pushed through from the rear and actually melted in place now this is obviously assembled on some kind of machinery whereby the whole thing will be sandwiched together there's sticky pads on the back of the uh, the printed circuit side of things which we will gently lever away using um, a flat edge like a screwdriver or or a, a hobby knife or something similar and uh, and then what we need to do is break these plastic pins at the back so that the the buttons pop out and the easiest way i found to do this was to actually use your jis screwdriver place it into the dimple at the back whilst holding the metal plate and apply pressure and twist as if you were screwing or unscrewing a screw head and what this does is it allows the metal plate to actually break the dimple while the centre of the screwdriver pushes the pin out and it's a little tricky, but hopefully I will be able to do at least one so you can see. There we go. And I don't know how easily you can see that, but there's the actual outer edge of the plastic that's been melted down to hold it into place, meaning that you can now push that pin through. So I'm just going to pop that there and then we'll do the same over here. And the same situation down here, we've got the plastic dimple and the info button should now lever out and pop out like so. And we can put that to one side. Now you go ahead and do exactly the same with the rest of these. You've got four that hold the outer rotary dial here. You've got two that hold the central uh, Q set button and they're the ones that will need to be glued back in place. You've got two that hold the menu and the play button and then you've got two that hold the record button at the top. So I'm going to go ahead and do the same with the JS screwdriver, pop out the remainder of these and we'll come back once all the buttons are removed and look at the removal of the board. Okay, so at this point you can see we have a collection of buttons and the one in question that does become problematic on reassembly is this one here with the Q set button because if it's not fixed in place, 
um, by some means it will fall out there's nothing to retain that once it's reassembled so you will need something like a dot of super glue or a tiny dot of hot glue or something similar now if you're um, If you're prone to carrying your camera about in your coat pocket and such like I am uh, as uh, I tend to uh, I, I tended to sort of gravitate towards the mirrorless cameras so that they were more portable so I I'd got a car carry around camera with a decent sized sensor then this is a good time to check behind your buttons and bits and pieces for bits of fluff and pocket detritus and give it all a good clean out and then we're left with the metal plate and the board that we are of course replacing this is the replacement next to the original on the metal plate as you can see and it's held down by a double-sided adhesive and once we peel that away in theory we should leave the adhesive on the metal plate and be able to use that to mount the new board straight over it taking care to align the holes especially where the plastic pins and the screws fit through because we don't want to damage anything upon reassembly and obviously in places like this where you've got this little sticker you also need to make sure that those holes are cleared either remove the sticker or just punch the holes through with a cocktail stick or a pin or the point of a hobby knife but obviously carefully if you're going to do that because you don't want to tear your brand new cable so the next thing we need to do I'm going to take a hobby knife to do this is to lift the edge gently here and just start prying upwards while applying gentle pressure to separate the ribbon cable from the double sided adhesive pad you can use something like a thin wide flat screwdriver if you're very very careful as well obviously it doesn't matter too much about damaging the cable on removal as you can see I don't know if you can see the hopefully you can see the sticky pad there uh, it doesn't matter about damaging the cable too much on removal but um, you don't want to be sort of slicing it into pieces unnecessarily or just causing yourself um, further problem so if you can remove it all as one piece as carefully as possible it just makes life a bit easier and then we'll do the same with this but this a little harder and you just have to take your time until you've got a little a little bit up and you can start peeling it away uh, the adhesive is surprisingly sticky if you did need to replace it I, uh, I imagine something like double-sided sellotape would work well but of course if you did replace it you would also have to make sure that you punched the holes through so I'm going to go ahead and continue peeling this off and we'll come back once that's done rather than have you sit there watching all that so there we are that's the the old board which has been peeled away and removed this is the new one that's going to go in its place and you can see where the bends are which obviously are here and here and you can see handily on the new ribbon that it's actually got a crease line in both of those locations showing exa exactly where it needs to bend which is uh, which is very useful and on the rear if I can uh, show this um, it's not going to come across very well on video I don't think but it looks almost like this piece has been reinforced a little better on the back it looks a bit thicker than the original one that could just be my imagination I don't know but overall it just looks like the coating on the back is a little thicker uh, which it may be and obviously that's no bad thing but clearly this is not something that you want to be uh, taking on and off obviously off the plate um, at all unless you need to replace it and the back is not something you want to be taking on and off unnecessarily and when you do you need to be much more careful than I was with regards to reattaching and removing the ribbon cable and trying not to flex it and straighten it so much one of the things I did notice last time when I replaced the last one was that it was very cold um, on that particular evening and in the room and because that might have been a factor I've made sure that it's actually very warm so that it's uh, this flexes as as well as it possibly can so the next thing I'm going to do is we're going to pop the old board to one side and at this point I need to very carefully 
obviously you can see the outline there and you can also see how uh, how sticky the, uh, the plate is but what I need to do is very carefully align these holes that uh, you can see in the board with the holes that appear in the metal plate this bit's a little tricky I will try and do this on screen and I found that it was easier to center the top one hold it in place and then make sure the ones below it are centered and that should be about it I'll need to move that and just check that against the light I think I'm a little bit off at the bottom so I might need to lift the bottom and, and rejiggle that but that's pretty close and obviously for the, these need to be as accurate as possible because the plastic pins are going to be pushing through here and also uh, you've got a couple of screws that go through as well so you don't want anything to damage any of this board once I'm certain that that's in place the next step will be to turn this one over and stick it to the back once I've either removed that sticker or, or cut some holes in and then it's a case of getting it all assembled back together in this unit and then we'll look at getting it back into the, uh, the rear of the body at which point we'll apply the bends into it, attach it to the camera and test it. So I'll be back in a moment with that. So we're back in just now with the the board stuck down to the metal backing plate on the front and on the rear. That will settle down once it's all in place, fastened up and, uh, and stuck in those. It's lost a little bit of the sticky at the top there, but it will hold. Uh, but this one's stuck nice and firmly. One thing I did find is this hole here next to the central Q menu button uh, was actually blocked with a little bit of the plastic moulding that forms part of this board. So I had to very carefully sort of trim that away with the hobby knife until I got a hole that the plastic pin of the Q set button would slot into satisfactorily because if that won't slot in properly it won't hold and it won't it won't press the button correctly in the middle there so uh, I did I was slightly wonky with this and I did have to lift this up to about this section and just do a bit of wiggling and reposition the holes but it is crucial that you get that aligned accurately so that the plastic pins for these do slot into the holes correctly so the next thing we need to do is start reassembling the buttons. So we'll start from the bottom and you can tell with the shape of the board that this lone one sitting at the top is the record button at the top. So I'll just refocus on this down here. So we'll start with the bottom info button. Apologies if I'm going off screen at any point here because I'm trying to kind of see what I'm doing as well as putting these in. And the plastic pin should pop in and actually grip quite well. Then the next one up is the turn dial which is surprisingly clean, that's good. You can see on the back of the turn dial that's the brass contacts that rotate and actually change the settings as you rotate the dial so and then the four-way rocker switch of course make sure that you align this incidentally with these two tabs up at the top this is what uh, these two buttons hook into to align them so one peg per corner Apologies again if I'm going off, off screen or out of focus here, but trying to align these is not the easiest thing in the world. There we go. And you can test each one of these as you put them in because they should click as they normally as they would in normal operation so you've got your four-way rocker switch your info button that bottom one's not in 
adequately. Now it is. And that's come adrift from there. That's slightly annoying, but we'll stick that back down in a moment. And this particular one sits in the middle and you have to kind of roll it around a little until it fits into place. And double check on the back for the two little pegs and the locating peg to pop through. And have a quick check of the Q button. Make sure that's clicking away. And the next one is the menu and play button, which the slots, if you can see these, let's get this down here. So you'll see that you've got two kind of little slots at the bottom and then the eyebrow bit at the top. And they go around those little nubs on top of the wheel and then the two locating pins should just slot straight in and you've got a good positive clicking on those and then the final one which is the record button which goes with the upward slope facing upward as logically it would locating the pegs and a quick press to check that everything's doing its thing. Fantastic. That's now all in place. And oops, apart from that, that's just fallen back off. As I say, once this is bolted in, all of these, with the exception of the Q button, will actually hold in place in the backing plate. So what I'm going to do next is put this into the backing plate, and then I'm going to very carefully apply a couple of drops of super glue to these two pins here and here and this locating pin just here. I'm going to lower the backing plate onto that rather than try and invert it and push it in. Making sure it clicks positively into place because you need to make sure you've got these two little lips clicked in as well. Down here, if you can see those, yep. Yeah here and here. So they need to be clicked in and all the buttons need to stand very slightly proud of their little indentation. Fantastic. So at this point we can secure the back on. So lift up the rubber thumb grip. Again just the edge. Take your screw that holds that in place. Should have gotten that ready first, really. So, ah. there we go. And then pop in this screw here until it nips up tightly. Push your rubber thumb pad back. That's the top section in place. And then we'll take the screw for the lower section. Bending the ribbon cable carefully, not too aggressively. Put the lower one in, which will hold that firmly in place. So having waited a suitable amount of time for the cyanoacrylate to cure, the super glue, that is. Um, and this is crucial because as, um, as cyanoacrylate, or uh, which is the active ingredient in super glue, cures, it will off gas, it will release uh, gases that can damage um, other items and it can fog sort of plastic and glass type items so you don't want to be throwing the whole thing back together and potentially messing up your LCD screen for example. Um, it's highly unlikely given the minute amounts used but give it a good few minutes to allow that to, to cure and set properly. So you can probably see you've got little bumps on there which stick to the back of the plastic pin to the metal which will help to prevent this uh, centerpiece of the twisty dial from falling out. You know, see, I know all the technical terms. Um, 
So what I'm going to do next, this is by no means essential, but what I want to do is plug this in. So before I actually bend the cable, I want to plug this in and check that it does in fact work. I'm going to feed the ribbon into here. And just lock down the clamp temporarily. And go ahead and switch this on. Hopefully you can see this okay. I'll just focus on this for you. All right, so first of all, Q menu, which works, menu works, play works. Info works, that's good. The next step is to bend the ribbon cable and to do this the method is very very carefully uh, which is obvious all things considered it's obvious uh, well it's logical all things considered but it's easier said than done but as i say it's got the two scribe marks that show you where it needs to bend so what i'm going to do is take the flat blunt edge of my hobby knife my Swan Morton scalpel hobby knife, holding that against the crease and fold that over. I'm not going to fold it until it's completely flat. I just want it so that it will bend enough so that when I place the back onto the camera, it will all push into place. And then I'm going to do the same thing with this one, but support it with my hand, hold it on the crease and bend it right there. So now I've got the appropriate shaped bend in the cable and the next step is to start fastening it onto the back of the camera. Come on now. Fantastic and then Flick the little release door closed, come on, there we go, and looking through the side to make sure that that's folding where it should, which it is, that's great, click that into place, brilliant, so we've now got that where it should be. Before I fasten anything else, I'm just going to very quickly pop the battery in and have a quick double check of the functionality. So, power on. No card in camera, we know that. We've just done that. So, the menu works, the play button works, the info button works. Brilliant. The set button quick menu works. Um, you know, interestingly, it's just occurred to me something that I didn't check was uh, the directional arrows, which clearly do work, as you can see, up, down, and left and right. So Q button works, the up button works, left and right works, and the scrolling as well, rotating wheel works. Uh, as I say, I do know all the technical bits and pieces. And the delete button, press and hold. 
so of course it's not going to open Magic Lantern because I've not got the card in. That's okay, I'm sure that will be okay. Um, we're back onto Aperture Priority. Let's get a screen with some information on. As you can see, the turning wheel works with that. The exposure compensation works. The exposure lock works. It's looking good. That's great. And finally, the record, but we'll need to put a card in. But again, I'm sure that that will be okay. And the record function works. Fantastic. And the delete function works. So uh, as we can see, we're now good to go. Um, I can put the rest of the camera back together. So I'm going to go ahead, put the rest of the camera back together, and then I'm going to show you the old um, ribbon keypad and show you where the tear occurred and how barely noticeable it is, surprisingly. So uh, we'll see that in just a second. As with the disassembly, if for any reason you want to see the um, I'd forgotten to add, likewise with the disassembly, if you want to see the full reassembly procedure, if you refer back to my LCD replacement video, you'll see the disassembly and complete reassembly procedure and where all the screws go and how it all fastens together and what to check for to make sure it's all buttoned up correctly. Okay, so there's the replacement of the keypad and ribbon cable on the Canon EOS M and M2. And I'll just show you now the old cable, which is obviously going to be discarded, but where the break occurred. So as it would be in the camera, it's this way up behind the plate, this bit wraps around, and then you've got this double bend, and it plugs into the board down here. The break occurred down in this bend here, and I'm going to try and get this up close so that you can see what's going on with it. Try and get it up under the light and focused up for you. And right in this crease here, you can see where it looks a little bit uh, pale. This is where the, um, the plastic, the adhesive plastic has lifted and it looks completely intact and it is actually intact in the sense that it's not pulling away but the break occurred if I turn that over you can actually see right there now hopefully this is going to be much more visible than it is on my little screen but if I peel that away you can see the actual where the actual cable and the contacts are it's, it's snapped right there, which is obviously just from bending, from flexing, straightening and flexing, straightening and flexing, which is clearly not good for it over a long period of time. And obviously if it's been sat there for a while and it's, and it's just started to snap along there. Now, of course, you only need two or three of these fine strands of, um, of stamped wire to break, to lose functionality. So I hope this was useful to you. Thank you for watching and we will see you in the next video.